Hi Disney. I've been a big fan of you guys um, for several years now, going all the way back up to um, the early 90s, when I first saw 101 Dalmatians in the movie theater and seeing The Jungle Book and Dumbo on VHS. And since then, you know, you guys have hooked me. I am a die-hard Disney fan, which includes your animated films, your live-action films, and everything else in between. But the reason why I am addressing you today is because I've noticed in like the last five years how you go about handling and treating your library. Most notably your animated classics in your live action from the, um, the golden age of Disney. I want to know what's going through your mind when you go about figuring out what you want to do with when you distribute a title because you really don't know how to manage and, and treat these films with the respect and the um, admiration that they deserve. I've got some examples here I want to um, share with you. Uh, the first example is The Sword and Stone. Now, The Sword and Stone is my all-time favorite Disney animated film. The first time you released it was back when it was part of the Golden Collection, and that was a great... I mean, this is still probably the best Sword and Stone version out there. It has tons of great special features. Uh, the only downside about this thing is on the back, it says that this film that was... Um, formatted from its original format, which tells me that it's not supposed to be in full screen, it's supposed to be in widescreen. Then, you know, a couple years later, you gave us the 45th anniversary edition. And again, this was fine. This was great. This was something I was really excited about. But you kind of, it was kind of a letdown because no really worthwhile special features and the most let down, let down was that you guys said that this was going to be in widescreen because I remember that on the press release but then it comes out and we find out it's in full screen again but again this and this were fine the picture was fine now we get to last year in 2013 for the 50th anniversary of this film you gave it its blu-ray release and I was beyond ecstatic for this because as I said this is my favorite Disney animated classic but for whatever reason you fucked up the release. I don't know exactly what you did, but from the best of my knowledge, you took the film, you put it in Photoshop, basically, and then you took the blur tool and you went through every single scene and you just smudged it to, you know, beyond, you know, it, it's not watchable. The 50th anniversary of The Sword and Stone is unwatchable because of what you did with the smudging tool. These films from the 60s and the 70s going all the way up until The Little Mermaid has that sketch quality to it. You're supposed to see that it's not finished. You're not supposed to go in there and smudge it all out that it's horrible. Because I've seen the clip, I've seen clips of the Blu-ray. I cannot watch that. It is just, what were you thinking? Why did you do that? Was it necessary to do that? Were you trying to go for something that it didn't work out and then you decided to, we're going to release it anyway and not cancel it and then go over it again? Because you shouldn't do that to your films. Don't go, don't go back and try to fix them. Leave them as they are. And the other thing I want to talk to you guys about is that was the 50th anniversary for The Sword and the Stone. And yet, the only thing that you gave for a new special feature was alternate opening. Which, that looked great. And you know, that, you know, that's a welcome addition. But where's a making of featurette or documentary or a audio commentary or a featurette about T.H. White, the author of The Sword and the Stone, or a featurette about, you know, King Arthur? Where are those kinds of things? They're nowhere because you didn't make any of them. So you messed up on the film and then you mess up on the special features. So not good, Disney. Not good. Moving from your animated films to your live action films now, we get to your pride and joy, the film that you hold in such high esteem and have on the highest pedestal that there is, the one, the only, 
Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins is one of my favorite live action films. It's not my favorite, but it's in the top five. And uh, I want to talk to you about the way that you've handled it and um, the um, 50th anniversary edition from last year on Blu-ray. Now, your first time you released it was back on the Golden Collection, and you know, that was fine. That was perfect. It didn't have a whole bunch of special features, but that was all right. It was just enough. Then we have the 40th anniversary. This is like the best release of Mary Poppins there probably ever will be because it has everything you could want. And then of course, a few years later, you released the 45th anniversary, but that was morally to coincide with the Broadway musical, which was all right to cash in on that, but still. Now we get to the 50th anniversary, which you released last year. Now, reason I don't understand why you guys like to release anniversaries the year before. It's not just you, Disney. Warner Brothers done it, and a whole bunch of other studios to do it as well. But the 50th anniversary of Mary Poppins. Now, as you hold this film in such high regard, this film, I would have expected from you guys to knock it out of the park with the 50th anniversary. Because as I said before, you know, you do hold this film in such high regard, but the actual thing you gave us last year was the worst version ever. Not the film, it was, you didn't try and come up with anything new. I mean, you could have done something that paid tribute to Richard Sherman, who passed away back in 2012, but no, you didn't do that. You gave us some stupid, thing called Marioki, which is, which is just stupid. That version you gave us was horrible. That's not the way you treat Mary Poppins. I mean, the film that, as I said, you have on such a high pedestal. That was, that was like you didn't even care. And I'm, I'm guessing the money that would have gone to the, you know, the out of the ballpark 50th anniversary Blu-ray went into the money that you made the saving Mr. Banks. I was kind of hoping for Mary Poppins extravagant Blu-ray, you know, bonanza, but no, you gave us that thing with the most minimalist cover you guys have ever done. I mean, that was like Criterion cover work, no, cover art that you gave the 50th anniversary of Mary Poppins. So it's like, you guys aren't even trying anymore. And another thing on top of that is, that's the film that, you know, Disney himself, you know, that's like one of his favorite films. But yet, you don't even, there's another thing, yeah, that, that's another thing I want to talk about now is, why are you so lazy when it comes to Walt Disney? It's not Walt Disney, it's Walt Disney's. Everything up until 1966, when Walt Disney passed away, was always Walt Disney's so-and-so, and then after he died, it's Walt Disney's production, or Walt Disney Productions, not Walt Disney or Disney. Why are you so lazy in your whatever department that comes, uh, your home entertainment department, to not put a apostrophe after the Y in Disney? Disney's, not Disney. Disney is nothing. Disney's makes, is something. I mean, I understand that you're just cold-hearted, you know, um, corporation who only cares about money and you don't really care about the fans because if you did, you wouldn't be giving us this crap that you have been giving us. Now we come to the real reason for this video. This year, in 2014, you decided to finally release Bedknobs and Broomsticks on Blu-ray. Of course, Bedknobs and Broomsticks gets released after Mary Poppins, but again, that's no surprise. But for this release of Bedknobs and Broomsticks on its debut on Blu-ray, you have fucked it up so badly. This is how badly you have fucked up this release. Let's start with the film itself. I don't know why you decided to go with the theatrical cut. The theatrical cut of the film is all right, but if you were going to include the theatrical cut, it makes sense that you would have added the restored version. 
that's been on not one, but two DVDs. The one, you know, the best version of Bed Knobs and Broomsticks we'll probably ever get with the 35th anniversary edition from the Golden Collection. And then you were just trying to make a fast buck with the uh, 2009 Enchanted Musical Edition. Though the only thing about this one is the nice cover art, even though you messed that one up because all the characters are way off. Now we get back to the Blu-ray. The theatrical cut just doesn't make sense because it doesn't tell the complete story like the restored version does. And I don't, I, it's a slap in the face is what you did with this release because you took the restored stuff and you put it as a special feature as deleted and extended scenes. You don't do that. Time and money went in to restore the film to its 140 minute cut back in 1996 for the 25th anniversary that was then released on DVD for the 30th anniversary. But still, you don't just go take the film like you did and cut it up Give us the theatrical version and then take all that time and money that went in to restore the film and add it as a bonus feature. No, you don't do that. Now we get to the most important thing with this release. You've had how many different times to get this right? But what you did for this release of Bed Knobs and Broomsticks is just... I don't believe it. You've had how many times to talk to Angela Lansbury to get, you know, record new stuff because there's always something new about this film that we could learn. I mean, that, or, or, you know, stories to share and that type of stuff. Like a well put together documentary. But no, we don't get that. We don't even get an audio commentary. I mean, I don't see how hard it would have been to get in touch with Angela Lansbury and work out a way about doing an audio commentary. Because I would love, I think everybody who are Disney fans of of this film and uh, Angela Lansbury and, and uh, just Disney in general even, a nice audio commentary for the film. But no, you gave us nothing. You give us the, you give us the theatrical cut to the film crappy bonus features that have been ported over from the 30th anniversary. Nothing new. Disney, seriously, what the fuck? Do you just not care about this film anymore? Because obviously that's what I'm getting here. I mean, back in the 90s, yeah, you cared about this film. Now you could give shit about it. Basically, that's what it is. If it's not certain films, you do not care about them. That's not how you treat your library. You don't treat your films like that. If you're going to give a treatment to one, you have to give it to all. Because, you know, that's the right way to do things. That's the way Walt Disney himself would do it. But no, it's like you don't even, you don't, it's like you don't even recognize that Walt Disney even existed. No, it's, it's, uh You guys, I don't know, I don't, I, I just, I don't, I don't know about you guys anymore. I mean, what you did to Bed Knobs and Broomsticks is pretty much, you know, got to the point where I, was, I don't, I, it's like, I, I would have expected more from you guys. But again, all you do is disappoint. I mean, if it's not one of those select few that are part of the Diamond Edition, then no other film matters. Disney, what is wrong with you guys? Do you just not care? Is that what it is? If you only care about a certain amount of films, then why not let some other studio handle the other films? Because they'll give the treatment they deserve. Because if we wait for you guys, you know, we'll be blue in the face. I've vented out what I want to tell you guys, and I would say that, you know, I hope you guys see this and you learn from this, so you, you know, you don't have these disgruntled Disney fans, you know, getting all worked up over this stuff, but we have a right to get worked up because this is not the way you treat your films. This, you just don't do that. I mean, I don't know anymore. I mean, so Sword in the Stone basically was how it was restraining it. Now when you do this to Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, it's like our relationship is almost nil. I'm about to just basically walk away from Disney. I could care less anymore. I love these films, but if this is the way you're going to treat them, then I, I, I'm done with Disney. I'm sorry, but you're going to lose me as a Disney fan. And that's pretty sad. I think I've said more than I need to say. And uh, with that, uh, I'm going to go.